Hello and welcome in this video. This is the first of a series in which we will cover Facebook Robin. What is it, how it works and how we can use Facebook Robin to build a complete marketing mix modeling project for our business. But before going into details about what this course is about, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Christian Nazzi. I'm the CTO and founder of Hybrida Marketing and Cassandra. Hybrida is a marketing consultancy agency, while Cassandra is a SaaS company. And in Cassandra, we use Robin alongside our custom-built models, and we found a lot of value in Robin, especially because it's really um, uh, an only-one solution which can be used by not-so-technical people as well. And since Robin is a still pretty new tool, as the per the time of recording, uh, there's not much uh, about it online. So we decided to record this tutorial, which is basically the, the first we have found online. And uh, let's get started. And sh uh, I'd like to show you a little about what this first video um, will be about. So we'll go over what uh, Marketing Mix Modeling uh, or MMM is, a really short introduction uh, and overview of the, of the meaning. And then we'll see some of the common problems with MMM. After that, we'll introduce Robin, what it is, how it does work, and how it does compare to other solutions in the market. Then we will uh, get a little overview about all the, the courts in, the, in its totality, so the next episodes as well. And then we'll go over to some useful links uh, for you after this course. So, First of all, what are MMMs? Basically, after iOS 14 and the general demise of cookies, MMMs started gaining back their popularity. MMM were a lot used uh, in the 80s and 90s, which uh, basically where they didn't have many analytical tools, just like Google Analytics or even Facebook Business Manager that tracks uh, all users' interactions with your advertising. So uh, they came up with this idea of using statistics to basically learn about uh, how their marketing activities were having an impact on their business. Um, then we have the cookies, which made it really easy for us to know everything our users did on our platforms and such. But since lately, in the past year mainly, um, all companies are starting to get more privacy focused, we really lost a lot about tracking. So uh, usually we don't really have real information, we don't really have complete information. So marketing mix models are getting back in the business. And basically they consist in a set of statistical techniques which can be applied without any tracking information, unlike approaches such as MTA, so multi-touch attribution. Uh, these techniques can be applied to our historical data, uh, such as um, uh, conversions, revenue, uh, ad spent. We can even track uh, spent on offline channels. So what we do basically is get in all this data and then we apply these models, which find a correlation between an output variable, which usually is either conversion or revenue, but it can be a number of leads or uh, even websites, um, traffic and stuff like that. And then we try to uh, describe that variable using another set of variables, which mainly are our span variables on medias and TV, podcasts, uh, everything. We are actually uh, doing paid advertising on, as well as organic variables. So we can use our uh, um, organic traffic from different sources as um, an independent variable, we call it, to describe our dependent variable, which is our output variable. And thanks to, to these techniques, we can answer a lot of business questions such as uh, how much uh, each channel is contributing to my sales, how can I increase my sales by uh, maybe changing the budget toward different um, media channels I have. And uh, basically uh, this solves a, this helps us describe our business, know where sales are coming from and how we can How does this differ from MTA? So MTA is multi-touch attribution, while MMM, of course, is marketing mix modeling. 
uh, it's really a different point of view to solve the same problem because MTA is based on users behaviors data and can be imprecise whenever let's say we have an e-commerce but we have local stores as well so a user sees our ads on Facebook but then he doesn't go and buy on our e-commerce but he, he physically go to the store to buy our item we won't really know that that sale is coming from Facebook because basically there's no way we can track our user behavior from Facebook to the store. And that's, for instance, a case where uh, MTA is not really precise. Besides from this, uh, it, it requires user level, da level data. So as we said, um, since cookies are getting less and less available and people often opt out of tracking, it's really tough even to, to know whether a sales is coming from Facebook or maybe uh, from Facebook and Google because I can change from PC to smartphone and that, that really breaks down the, the user experience and gives us impre imprecise data. MMM, on the other hand, doesn't need any user information data and it can handle mixed sales channels as well, like we said. Uh, if there is a correlation between Facebook ads and Google Organic, maybe MMM can actually spot that correlation and tell you that um, and uh, assign some of the value of Google Organic sales to Facebook ads so that we know uh, something is actually happening there. And since we do not require user level data, it's even easier to, <clears throat> sorry, to get the data because we just need aggregated data. Uh, we will see later in the course in detail what kind of um, what a data set looks like for a marketing mix modeling project. But uh, so far, what, what's important to understand is that MMM doesn't mind about cookies. All we want to know from MMM is actually things we mainly have control over. So uh, how many sales have we done day by day? Uh, how much we have spent on different channels day by day? Uh, how these channels are bringing us impressions or clicks, which are metrics that are ground truth basically there's no no way that you are you can get a wrong uh, number of impressions because that's not based on cookie that's just how many people see your ad so um, as per today as for the the world we we live for now and probably for the years to come uh, since we it will always be harder and harder to get this um, this kind of user level data, MMM are a really great solution to, to help us answer some business questions. But there, uh, of course, is a negative side as well to MMM because uh, usually the main reasons why people or agencies are not implementing MMM yet is because you may need some degree of statistics background in order to apply these techniques because um, it's not really a one-shot thing. So you have to do transformations on your media. You have to understand how to find the correlations between variables, how you can, uh, what variables to include and what not. And there's so much about it, which uh, requires uh, some, some statistic backgrounds and not everyone has it. So um, that can be a first, uh, a first, uh, let's say, tough thing to overcome. On the other hand, if we decide to go with consultancy agencies, they are usually expensive, maybe too expensive for small businesses because, of course, uh, as there is much to know, uh, agencies tend to, to charge high prices for a full consultancy package. And uh, as well as this, there is the fact that a complete marketing mix modeling project may require even a few months from start to finish. So from the moment we decide, okay, let's do marketing mix modeling and we start uh, getting the data, we start understanding which data we need and then the transformations, the modeling, uh, the analysis, everything, uh, it can actually be a, a, long, uh, a long project. So maybe you need answer by the end of the month and it can really be tricky. However, um, Facebook came to help with a really, really smart solution, which is Robin. And it's basically Facebook's latest MMM library, allowing you to build your own MMM project uh, even in just a few hours. Robin is a semi-automated and open source library built from uh, the research team in Facebook. And it does it 
all for you. So you just have to get your data at the, at the start, your, the, the, data, the data you want to use in the right format, and then you pass it to Robin, you, do, um, you customize the code in order to work for your data set, and then basically it does it all for you. So transformations, uh, optimization, plotting of the outputs, it's really a complete solution. And the good thing is that you don't really need to be a techie in order to use it. Uh, the, the language, the programming language used is R, which may not be super easy, but the commands are really self-explanatory. So with just a little bit of, um, of time, you'll, you'll get used to it. You will, you'll understand how it works, how you can tune the, the code in order to do uh, whatever you actually need it to do. And let's get a little deeper about how Robin works. So, Robin basically, uh, as you can see here, uh, let's remove all the part where, where you decide which data to include, where you get the data set and stuff. That's something you have to do uh, before starting the modeling process. Let's say uh, we end up with our uh, fine model, uh, not sorry, not model, but uh, we're ready to use data set and we start passing it to Robin inputs. Robin inputs is a function which takes in all your data, both paid media parts, so what, uh, how much you are spending on Facebook, on Google, on TikTok, uh, uh, the impressions you are getting and stuff like that, as well as organic variables. So uh, you can pass to, the, to that uh, how many referral um, sessions you have had, how many from emails and stuff like that. And then he uses Profit. Profit is another al algorithm uh, always developed by Facebook, which allows you to decompose your business trend and Rob and profit sorry uh, is able to understand how your business is correlated to holidays so if there's a lot of uh, uh, let's say for instance you do a lot of sales over uh, christmas that's something that profit can understand and actually uh, find and tell you um, as well as um, Maybe your business is really seasonal. So uh, in the summer, you sell a lot less and in the, um, in the winter, the sales go up. That's something Profit can understand and will go through why this is really cool in a second. And besides from that, Profit can actually understand if there are days of the week, your sales go better. And if there are and what the trend of your business is. So the trend is basically, if I stop doing marketing, if I stop doing anything, I will still uh, be able to generate some sort, some level of sales. And that's called the trend. And Profit can actually find that as well for you. And now about why this is cool, because all this information are then passed back to Robin in order to actually know what kind of suggestions to give you because maybe we are in a, in a time of the year where your sales are really low, so Robin may actually tell you lower your budget for the next month, and then you refresh the model, you ask new suggestions to Robin on, on, on Christmas, let's say, and Robin may tell you, okay, go, go increment your budget because there's a lot of chance here to, to actually increase sales. So all these informations Robin, uh, sorry, Profit finds for us, uh, are not really only for us, but are for Robin too. Besides from that, we can give uh, other variables to us, contextual uh, variables, which are cool because, you know, your business in, is not only influenced by variables you have control over. Maybe your business is influenced by how COVID changed the people's movement. So less people are going to the office, more are working from home. That's maybe a factor that's actually having an impact on your business. Maybe you are a grocery store, for instance, or a, a restaurant and less people are coming to you as well as maybe um, we had this one client, which is in Peru. And where when Peru had a really bad crisis, we noticed that uh, there was a real high correlation between how many sales our client was doing and how the um, exchange between dollars and pesos, which is basically the, uh, the value, the money they use in Peru. And 
These are all variables that you can use in your model to better describe your business, which is extremely helpful. And sometimes it's hard to find this data, but there are many services and tools to, to help you do that. So we get all our data. We divide it for Robin. So we tell Robin, uh, look, this is paid, this is organic, this is profit variables and stuff like that. And then Robin does all the transformations for us. And this is another thing extremely cool because, you know, uh, your business, you really, in order to describe your business well, uh, there are mainly two things in marketing which we tend to, which we really, uh, it's important to do. And it's ad stock and um, diminishing return. So basically ad stock, what, what says is uh, if I'm spending $100 today on Google ads, not all people that see an ads today are going to convert today. Maybe somebody is going to convert in a week from now, maybe uh, somebody in two weeks from now and stuff like that. So uh, if I'm spending a hundred today, some part of that $100 is actually going over to the next days. This is ad stock basically. So it's, uh, it, it finds uh, how much of your today's sales, uh, today's spends goes and influences sales on the next days. As well as this, there is the diminishing return. So imagine you are spending actually um, $100 on Facebook. If you spend $100 on Facebook, you may have uh, 10 conversions back. However, if you spend $200 on Facebook, you may not have 20 conversions back. That's because the, um, the increase in sales is not exponential, but it has some, there is a saturation point. So uh, it's not like this, but it goes up, 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 and then it starts to flatten because then you reach a saturation point. And after that, the incremental, um, the increment on sales related to ad spend is actually always less and less. So uh, all of this is done by Robin automatically. We don't really have to do anything besides telling Robin this is paid media arts and you have to apply this kind of transformations on them. And the cool thing here uh, is another one because when you're doing marketing mix modeling, not only you have to know all these transformations by yourself, how they work, the formulas behind them and find the best one for yourself because there are many different formulas, sorry, um, to achieve these transformations, but you actually have these things called hyperparameters, which are some uh, parameter you have to pass to your model in order to, um, to calculate the formula. So there are many things that the, the marketing mix model do for you, but there are some things that you have to actually uh, pass to the model. And that's another thing that's pretty hard for analysts to, to find and to tune and to, to get the exact parameter to, to get the best result. But this is all um, already inside Robin because Robin uses another library called Nevergrad, which basically does exactly this. It, Nevergrad does hyperparameter optimization. So without going in too deep in details, basically uh, you, you specify all the other parameters in your model that you need to um, to optimize. And don't worry, Robin tells you exactly what those other parameters are. So you don't really have to do much about it. And Nevergrad runs a set of iterations. So it tries a lot of different combinations. And imagine you can have even 10, 20, even 100 potentially other parameters. And, and Nevergrad does it all for you. So you don't have to worry. It's going to find the optimal combination of, of everything for you. So uh, after that, there are a couple more things really cool in Robin, which are model window and calibration input, which we'll go over for now. We'll, we'll talk about it later in the next episodes. So after doing all of this, it does checks to, to be actually sure that everything is correctly set and correctly formatted and pass it to Robin Engineering. Uh, here, actually, the, the magic happens, we can say. So um, it starts uh, doing the um, profit decomposition, as, you, as we said earlier. So it finds the trend, the season, the week, the holiday, and stuff like that. Then it decomposes the uh, categorical variables and starts to find the correlation be between each channel with a span, so each media variables or stuff like that, and the 
uh, the output variable. So let's say we're modeling conversions. Uh, what it does is starts with a correlation between conversion and a channel for each channel. So it starts to understand uh, how each channel is correlated to sales. After that, there is the, oh, sorry, there is the core model. So the, the Robin run function. Here, uh, all the transformation are applied and used. So ad stock and saturation get applied and then the data, the transformed data gets passed to ridge regression. Ridge regression is really similar to linear regression. So uh, basically it, um, it tries to define a function that describes how the sales vary over time based on how all other variables vary. So if I spend more on Facebook, what happens when, uh, on conversion? So do I get more, do I get less? How many more do I get and stuff like that? That's really the, the core about the, the modeling process. And the thing with ridge regression, which sets, uh, defines it from the, the linear one, is that ridge has this hyperparameter called alpha, which can be used to, um, to basically handle multicollinearity. So what can happen is that there, there's this uh, correlation between variables used in the model where one variable is highly correlated to another. And we are not talking like Facebook and conversion. We are talking like uh, Facebook spend and maybe Google organic. So this can be a problem because whenever I spend a lot, the organic sales, uh, the organic sessions goes up a lot. And when I don't spend, it goes down and it's basically it looks like it's the same variable, which is not good for our models because that's going to create some confusion and not de really describe the, the, the reality well. So uh, what we can do in this situation is use, use ridge regression with this alpha hyperparameter to tell him to basically penalize some variables based on um, the potential multicollinearity between them. After that, there is an optional step, which is model calibration, which for now we will ignore. And, and then there is basically, um, this one is the important one, which is model one pagers, because Robin is going to output you several models. We'll see these in details in the next episodes. But what you, what's important to know here is that uh, Robin is going to actually plot you something that you can potentially show to your stakeholders, your team, your uh, CEO or whatever, uh, which basically describes your business and show them exactly all the modeling process you have done. So as you can see here, there is the <clears throat> never grab part in between here, which has the, um, all the optimization of the other hyperparameters, then passes them back to the, uh, Robin MMM function before generating the one pager and applying the, the ridge regression. And after that, there is the budget allocator, which is another key feature of Robin, which really uh, sets, it, sets it apart from the competition, uh, because basically Robin can tell you is exactly uh, how to allocate your budget over all your channels. So not only media channels, but even let's say you are spending on TV, you are spending on radio, you are spending on um, local uh, ads, so uh, stuff like out of form and stuff like that. Uh, Robin can tell you exactly how you should allocate your budget. So even if you s should save some money because maybe you are overspending on everything or just keep the same amount but distrib distribute differently, that's really something that Robin does it for you. And another key feature of Robin, which really is extremely cool for um, <clears throat> as a sorry for modeling for marketing mix modeling, is the fact that you can refresh your model. So let's say today we, um, we build our first model that describes like our business in the past two years. Then we use the budget allocation information. We change our budget, we tune our uh, budgets on our different channels. And then we, we wait two weeks or maybe a month. Then we are going to have one month more data or two weeks more data. So that's going to be new data we can use to refresh the model in order to get new uh, information. And the cool thing here is that you won't have to do all the process again, because basically you are not building a new model, you are refreshing your model. So Robin already knows a lot about your business um, and it's actually going to be to learn what's happened with this new information, with how you allocated your budget in the past month, let's say, and then it's going to give you new suggestions. And 
for our experience, what we, we found so far using Robin is that the refresh part really uh, tunes Robin a lot. So it, it really gets uh, a lot more precise and the error goes down, the R square goes up and it's really a, a cool feature and a, a, a must have in future MMM tools. Anyway, even the model refresh is going to generate the same result as the, the basically the first modeling. So you are, you'll have your new one pager models, you'll have your budget allocation, and you will see how um, how the the model is tuning to your actual business. So um, after this really deep comprehensive view of how Robin works, let's see what other kind of options are there in the market. Basically, there are three things we can go for. We can go for a third-party MMM solutions like a complete separate agency doing everything for us, uh, uh, which tends to be a really uh, really high investment because they are doing everything. They, there's going to be a lot of effort on our side on talking to them and trying to tune the model together, understand, iterate and stuff like that. They don't know our business, so it's going to be a longer process usually because maybe they will understand something not as it is so it's going to to take more time and extremely more money usually to to invest or we can go with a solution in the mid so in SaaS a third party SaaS software uh, which is requires less consultancy because usually you are the one doing the modeling uh, through their um, uh, through their their instrument let's say but usually here the investment is still high because they tend to give you everything uh, packed on their machines. So you have to buy their servers, you have to buy uh, the, um, the license and everything. So it's still kind of a, a big investment. Or you can try uh, something like Robin, which basically is a library. You can install everything on your PC, uh, whether it's a Mac or a Windows PC. Uh, I, I believe it works on Linux too, but I'm not sure about it. And basically you can do all by yourself, but don't be scared about um, how hard it can be because as you, will, as you will see in the next episodes, it's really something that you can get um, used to real quick. So um, as you can see, investment goes up. It's always more to the consultancy part or you can save money. You're going to require, of course, a little bit more analytical capability, but not really... Um, statistic things. It's more about understanding how MMM works. So uh, you can follow a couple courses, maybe read a couple blog posts about MMM, their transformations, and you really get the idea of what's going on behind Robin. And so this is all for this episode. We introduced Robin, how it works, uh, and so a little bit how it differs from other solutions. What we will see in the next episode. So uh, this course is going to be a total of five episodes and in, on the next one we are going to do all the installation and setup part. So we're going to install R, which is our uh, programming language of, uh, of choice, the one Robin uh, works on. R Studio, which is going to be our editor, Robin, uh, all the packages required, all the uh, libraries and stuff like that. On episode three, we are going to overview, we are going to review the code, basically, uh, line by line. We are going to explain what it does, how we can change that to work to, to your specific uh, business and model. And we are going to basically execute it. Sorry, Alexa, turned on. Um, then, on, uh, and we are going to execute. So we are going to, to build our first marketing mix modeling on our business, basically. And then on episode four, we are going to review the outputs of episode three. So episode three is going to give some several um, um, models. Episode four is going to be a really uh, in-depth uh, analysis of the models, what every plot, what every graph mean. So what kind of information we can take from those um, from those one-pager models we are going to, to get and how we can use those information to... Uh, to share them with our uh, our team and stuff like that. So we're going to analyze all the models, select the best one, the one that bet, best describes our business. And then on episode five, we are going to use that one model for budget allocation. So we're going to, um, 
to see the code for the budget allocation, we are going to generate the budget allocator for our business, and then we're going to analyze the budget allocation, what kind of uh, suggestion it will give us, and how we can use those suggestions to, to implement them in our business. So that's basically everything for this video. Uh, here, a quick um, list of useful links. You will find the full documentation of Robin, the GitHub repository. As, uh, as we said, Robin is open source, so you can have access to the, to the code itself. And uh, we will link you to the Robin users community, which is a Facebook group, uh, which, which is extremely helpful because you will find Facebook developers in there. You can ask questions, better understand, maybe uh, get help on problems and stuff like that. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.